Welcome back to Pivot Point. My name is Liz Hart, and I'm the founder and executive director of Taylor for Success. And I haven't done one of these in a while, um, but this is sort of like a coffee break. And I want to give a little background to this one and how it came about. So today I have an HR professional with me. His name is David Hart. And yes, we are married. Um, we were having a conversation about a uh, typical interview question that um, I answer in a certain way and have for many years and recently discovered that I could actually be wrong in my answer. So the question was, um, when you're in an interview and the interviewer asks you, tell me about yourself. Now, for several years, I have been given the advice of, um, that's too broad a question. You need to get the interviewer to um, focus on a, a particular area. And it was also one of the ways that I get, I would advise people to shift the conversation back on the interviewer, okay? And I would say, well, that's a very, so when the question is asked, tell me about yourself, I would say, I'd love to, it's a pretty broad question, what specifically would you like to know? And that is built on the premise that they have your resume in front of them, and so they're not really asking about your background. However, um, I heard recently um, in a meeting that I was on that people, interviewers don't like that question and there's a lot of pitfalls. So I asked David, um, is my response a good one? And you, we got into this long conversation about why saying that could potentially be a uh, pitfall for an interviewer because you don't wanna ask personal questions, right? So David, it, am I summing that up correctly yeah. in our conversation? Yeah, by the way, thank you for having me. Um, so you bring up you bring up several great points. So historically, interviewers used to ask just as kind of an icebreaker question, tell me about yourself. And we are living in a much more litigious society these days, especially now when it comes to hiring and, and things along those lines. And so the, the couple of problems with tell me about yourself is, is that oftentimes a candidate doesn't fully understand what type of answer you're looking for. And your response is about when you do get the tell me about yourself question, directing it back to the interviewer to ask, well, I'd love to tell you about myself. What areas would you like to know about type of idea? And I think that's pretty, pretty, pretty much the summary of what you said. The problem is, is that candidates will, will respond to the tell me about yourself question and they will go into their life stories. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is, is that more often than not, the, the their professional life is rarely touched upon in that tell me about yourself question. And as that moves forward and the answer and, and more and more come out from the candidate's answer, they will start telling you personal issues. They will start telling you uh, things about, you know, sometimes you may hear things about their family or whatever it might be. And whether this candidate is a good candidate for the role or not a good candidate for the role, it kind of handcuffs the interviewer and the interview team that if you decide not to move forward with this candidate as the selected candidate, conceivably that candidate can come back to you and say, you did, you decided not to hire me because I mentioned to you that I am X, whatever it is, or whatever their interest might be, whatever their answer might've been on a personal side of things. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I always recommend to my hiring managers, I reckon, for, let me, let me go back just for a quick second. So what is an interview? I think we need to understand a little bit. And this is where um, most interviewers do not understand this. Uh, and most candidates don't understand this. Is first of all, an interview is the, the opportunity for the candidate to tell the prospective employer about themselves and about their 
their work history, their um, their knowledge, skills, and abilities, and how they would fit into that position that they've applied for. So, so it's, basically, it's, it's go so ahead. it's a it's a conversation between two it, it's a conversation exactly, but it's also an opportunity for the employer to sell the company or sell the position. So it 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 should a, a good interview should be a two way conversation. So it's both the employer and the candidate selling themselves and letting people know about letting letting the interview team know about themselves, the company, whatever it might be. And the other the other um, the other piece of information that most people don't understand is the majority of interviewers who interview really don't know how to interview. Mm -hmm. And one of the one of the earliest tells that you can tell when an interviewer is not well schooled in interviewing is when they do ask that question. Tell me about yourself. Yeah. Okay. So a strong candidate like yourself would come back and say, "I'd love to tell you about myself. What would you like to know about?" Mm -hmm. And that opens up that opens up that opportunity for a more professional response. Mm -hmm. We recommend to our hiring managers, and I recommend to our hiring managers, is to be very specific about the question. So you can. So basically, we've crafted a question that says, "Tell us what interested you in this position, and what unique qualities and skills you will bring to the role." Mm -hmm. And that that is a great. I believe that's a great icebreaker question, and in probably ninety percent of the interviews that I do, and I'm I'm involved in a lot of them. Um, that's question I use. It doesn't matter what the role is. If it's an entry level mm -hmm. role to a CFO role, CEO role, whatever it might be, it's a type of question that sort of gets a little bit of information from the candidate so that they can start to highlight some of their professional knowledge, skills, and abilities and mm -hmm. where they come from, a little bit of their background from a professional side of things. Okay. So, but the candidate would need to give more of an answer than just their elevator speech pitch, right? Absolutely. Yes. It's, it's an opportunity for a candidate to really kind of give maybe a three or four minute synopsis on their professional uh, career mm -hmm. and how they, and basically how they ended up where they are sitting across from you or your interview panel uh, at this particular opportunity. Okay. And so, um, I, and I think, thank you. That was a that was a great um, answer. And um, I, I want to go back a little bit about what an interview is. And um, I always like to describe it as a dating situation. You know, you're trying to get to know each other a little bit. And um, as an interviewer, um, as a person who who manages many um, hiring managers. Um, Two questions. Do you give your hiring managers training on how to in interview someone? And do you talk about um, how they can sell the company to the candidate? Yeah, so that both of those questions are great questions. And the answer to both of those questions is yes. Hmm. So in in human resources, it's it, it really is our responsibility to train our hiring managers as best as we can on the interview process. Um, the hiring process overall yeah. and you know really the first part of the the very early part of the interview of, of the hiring process is being able to um review candidates and determine which candidate may which candidates may or may not be potentially uh right for the position so that builds your interview pool and so once you're able to once you're able to gather an interview pool that you think you've got you've got qualified candidates to bring in for interviews, then obviously the next step would be is setting up those interviews and then also creating an interview, a series of interview questions. Mm -hmm. And one thing that hiring managers in many cases make a mistake on is they will try to ask too many questions in an interview. And which depending upon the role will depend upon the number of questions that you're going to ask. We best practice that we tell our hiring managers for entry level to maybe medium level positions, usually somewhere between 10 to 12 questions. Um, and 
interviews generally should run anywhere from say 30 to 45 minutes. Again, once again, depending upon the role. Um, the other thing is, is as, as the role is higher in the organization, then you would, you know, you would ask more questions. You might ask more knowledge, skills, and ability questions. Um, you know, it depends. But one thing that we try to tell our hiring managers is that for a fair number of roles that they're trying to hire for, again, once again, depending upon the level of the role, generally one interview is enough and you should be able to determine the appropriate candidate within 10 or 12 questions after you've interviewed the, the individuals that you want to bring in. We, we also try to tell our managers, uh, we try to help craft questions for them. And we also, and, and the method that we use, the method of questioning that we're using right now, uh, and it's very popular and it's it seems to be getting the best answers are behavioral behavioral mm. based questions. Okay. So it's basically tell me about a situation when you dealt with a upset customer or again, they all have to be crafted around the role that you're doing, but they should all be behaviorally based so that the interviewee or the candidate can say, well, there was a particular situation when I encountered a, a client that was not happy that we were late on getting a project in or whatever it might be and how was and 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 how that and how that client and I, I'm sorry how that candidate answered and took care of that particular situation so that is that that's really a way of getting some in-depth understanding of how they may uh, respond to situations at your organization when when they come when they come across and the other thing that we teach our hiring managers is, and th this is always the big one, and you would be shocked at some of the questions that get asked about what questions not to ask. Right. Good, good point. Right. I mean, the obvious ones are, you know, are you planning to have a family? Um, yeah, we have, how old are you? I mean, right. and you would, and, and in today's day and age, you would, it just, it, it boggles the imagination, honestly, <laughs> that people are still asking these questions. I mean, different questions that we've said, are you married? Do you, uh, do you have or plan on having children? Who will take care of your children while you're at work? Uh, oh. Is English your first language? Really? Uh, are you a U.S. citizen? Um, what country are you from? All of these questions are, they're just outright illegal questions to mm. ask. And this is how companies and organizations and interviewers get themselves into trouble. Um, what is your religion? What church do you go to? Do you have any disabilities? All of these types of things will get an organization into hot water mm. um, if, if the candidate is offended and they want to pursue something along those lines. But it also gives your organization uh, a bad reputation because mm -hmm. with social media and all of these, you know, all these uh, social media platforms and, and blogs and everything else, it doesn't take long for a negative reputation for your organization to get out there. Right. And it gets right. picked up so, so quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that brings me back to my question about selling the company. You know, um, you, when you're interviewing someone, you talk about the benefits of working for your company and so forth. Um, it, it, is that difficult to do? Or, or I guess the, the question is, what questions should the candidate ask so, you to show that, that they've done their research, but not just surface level research? Exactly. So as, as you know, from, from career coach and, and you and I have met, you and I have worked with hundreds of clients uh, that have come either through Tailored for Success or from other organizations that I've been a part of, one of the things that we always tell our, our clients, which generally are going to be candidates for a role somewhere, in whatever organization or company or what have you, is, is that prior to an interview, you, the candidate, need to do your homework. So, I mean, everything is available today on the web. So you can go out, you can, and there's, I don't think there's a company out there today that doesn't have a website or a Facebook page or a, or a, um, uh, some type of, some type of social media presence yeah. one way or the other. 
So you need to spend some time as a candidate. You need to look that stuff up. You need to find out uh, what does the company do? You need to really read, go in depth on the job description, because if job descriptions are written properly, they will, they, they will give you almost all the information that you need to know, certainly about that role, but mm. also will give you some insights into the organization. Many job descriptions today will also list or have links to comprehensive benefits so that you can go in and you and, and you know and you can go in and check out what the benefits are. But what we also do with our hiring managers and with our uh, and I, I I'm, I'm lucky because I have a talent acquisition team that also uh, works in our organization, they can prepare um, hiring managers and hiring teams. What are points that you want to make sure that you touch upon? when it's your turn to sell the company and sell the organization to the candidate. Because the simple fact of the matter is, is, is that any candidate that you're interviewing more than likely is hopefully they're currently employed because as you know, it's always yeah. easy to find a job when you have a job yeah. uh, and that, and, and, and we've been doing this long enough, Liz, and you know this, <laughs> You can tell when somebody's unemployed and because there's that, just that air of desperation. Right. Uh, Deer in the headlights. Exactly. And good interviewers will pick up on that in a minute. So then yeah. naturally, in, in especially in today's economy, why aren't you currently employed? Yeah. What happened? Where have you been? What, you know, what's been going on? And the other thing is, is that even when you get down to the point of selecting a candidate and offer, you have to also understand that more than likely, you're not the only offer that candidate has mm -hmm. on the table. Yeah. So the re so that in that really uh, enhances the reason why you need to be able to sell the key points of your company. Mm -hmm. It might be your benefits. It could be your retirement plan. It could be, it could be um, tuition reimbursement. Yeah. It could be um, you know uh, a robust out of office uh, opportunities between mm -hmm. sick time, vacation time, and holidays, or all of the above for that. Yeah. And organizations, they, their benefits need to be competitive with everybody else's uh, right. in order to attract good, um, good order, in, in order to attract good talent. Yeah. So, so we'll help the, we'll help the hiring manager prep a sheet. And mm -hmm. we've even done, we've even done that when you're leaving on an interview, I'd like to leave you with, these are some of the mm -hmm. benefits that we offer. And here's a link that you can go to, to get more, more, um, more information about our benefits. All of our job postings will have a link to what we call our comprehensive benefits so that they can go in, so the candidates can go in and they can see what types of uh, medical insurance that we provide, what types of uh, dental vision, all of that type of stuff that we provide and other additional um, additional benefits to joining our organization. That's really great because I remember back back in the day, um, you'd have to search that information out yourself or wait right. until you got an offer to find out that information. So I think that that saves a lot of time. Um, so my last question for you is, um, what type of questions do you like candidates to ask you as an interviewer? So I really, so the, there's always the, the I, I call this the one candidate, candidate interview traditional question. And it's in some form or another, and I haven't had to do one in a while, so I'm a little choppy on it. But basically, uh, I uh, is there anything more that you need to know about me, um, or do or and go back to the go back to the interview team and say, did I you know is there any, is there any additional information you want to know, depending upon what that answer is, or regardless of what that answer is, what are the next steps in this process? Mm. So that is, is so those two types of questions um, really will that so if if it's a good interview that increases that dialogue a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so the interviewer, I've also asked, depending upon how the interview goes, I've also asked um, based on my responses to your questions. Do you see any? You know, what do you think are my strong points? What do you think might might be my weak points? And how do you think I would fit in? to mm. your or to your team in mm -hmm. this particular role. Very few interviewers will answer that question because they're afraid to answer that question. Right, and right. Sometimes they're just not sure. But that is a really great question. But mm. you can't ask questions about like, so what does your company do? 
Yeah. I mean, if you don't know by now and you haven't done your research, that's just showing that you're not you're not well versed in what's going on. You never ask questions about so how much vacation time do you offer? You never ask salary questions. Right. Um none of you know th those are the simple questions uh how many breaks do i get during the day or something along those lines and those are all you know you don't see those in all level roles but you we still see them occasionally come up yeah i mean it sounds simplistic but it happens all the time that people ask these questions and again it, it depends on the level um and i think if, if i'm hearing you correctly basically what you're saying, um, the two questions that you like, is that um, for the interviewee to ask is you, you're basically asking the interviewer, is there anything in my background, what we talked about, et cetera, et cetera, right. that would prevent you from offering me this position, right? Exactly. And that that's, that's so much better worded than I had it, but it's exactly what I'm talking about. And I think you had mentioned to me, I think you had mentioned to me uh, at one point, um, about another question, and this is a bold question for a candidate, but sometimes depending upon how that interview is going and how that dialogue is going, you can flip it back to the interviewer or the interview panel and say, how did, so tell me a little bit about how you got to where you are today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because who doesn't like to talk about themselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a, a great one. And the other thing that we always want to remind our candidates, and I know you do it, I know I do it all the time, um, and even for my interview teams, I always tell I always tell candidates, it's okay to take notes. Yeah. Okay. And I and I I've also told candidates that there that there's nothing wrong with having some predetermined questions written down because mm -hmm. let's face it, everybody is on high anxiety in an interview. Yeah, And so you, if there are two or three questions that you have that you just want to ensure that you don't forget, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with having those written down in your portfolio or whatever you happen to bring. Uh, and, and you know, today we see so many virtual interviews. So yeah. all you're seeing right now is just our, you know, our shoulders up. Uh, I've got notes right here that I'm looking mm -hmm. at. Um, yeah, yeah. So just to remind myself to bring things up. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with that. Either. Right, right. Yeah, that's 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 a good point. Um, so um, I I thank you for your wisdom and your insight from a interviewer's perspective. I wonder, would you come back and talk about? Because I know we've had many conversations over resumes, and when you look at resumes and things like that, you may or may not do that as much as you used to. But um, just some things that people should be aware of in their resumes. Yeah. Absolutely. I would love to do something on resumes and more so now today be, because resumes need, really need to be tailored to the yeah. position. I call a resume a living document. Okay. And what I mean by that is, is that for every role that you apply to, your resume should focus on that role. It should just not be one general resume. General. That's a whole, yeah. that's a whole other discussion. That's a whole other conversation. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, David, thank you for your time and thank you for your insight. Um, I'm sure the listeners are going to enjoy it and we will um, definitely talk soon. Excellent.